What up, YouTube? It's your boy. <clears throat> I'm back at it again. And today at Unscripted, I wanted to talk to you guys about the best ways to study for the ASVAB exam 2024 and up. So from hence, these are going to be some of the best ways to prepare for the exam. Um, if you're dealing with a, a time crunch, um, if you haven't been um, to school in a while and some of the concepts aren't as fresh um, in your mind as it should be, I mean, you are in the right place. The best way to study for the ASVAB, quite frankly, is a combination of uh, multiple ways or multiple techniques, right? You can use the contents available on YouTube. You can use Google. Um, you can study with a buddy. You could do all kinds of stuff, right, to study for the ASVAB. But I think one of the best ways in this day and age is to combine your studies with um, some sort of artificial intelligence, whether that be ChatGPT or BARD or anything at your disposal, right? And what I mean by that is <clears throat> typically what you want to do is run through the exam the first time around without any assistance from anyone, right? making sure to complete the test within the time limits that you've been given. Uh, so for instance, uh, this electronics information test, you would complete the exam in the nine minutes required, right? To complete the 20 questions. So you will run through it and afterwards you will grade yourself to see which ones you got wrong, which ones you got right. The ones that you got wrong, <clears throat> You can perhaps, you can use AI assistance to help you out. For instance, let's say you got number one wrong. You didn't know uh, what this was and you wanted to find out more about it, right? Um, instead of Googling, I mean, if you Google this, you'll probably, they'll, you know, you'll get multiple links and you'd have to follow a few of those links to kind of figure out exactly what the issue is or uh, why the correct answer is the correct answer. I think in 2024, um, and I mean, I think this tool has been available to us, you know, from 2023 and up. So, but I'm just saying if you're studying for the exam in 2024 and maybe even in the future, right, this is not only relevant for 2024, but 2024 and up, um, any, <laughs> um, so well, this is what you would do. You copy the, the question that you got wrong after you graded, you've graded yourself. You can look at the uh, questions that you got wrong and go through it one by one. Copy the question, the question along with the multiple choice um, answers. Paste it here, hit enter, and let's see what ChatGPT tells us. ChatGPT tells us that in this case, Ohm's law states that voltage is equal to current times resistance, um, which is true. Um, but say you didn't know you wanted to get more clarification on this. Um, you could probably even ask ChatGPT, hey, could you clarify this some more? So let's ask ChatGPT to clarify this some more to see exactly why Ohm's law states that... Um, Voltage is equal to current times resistance. And look, we get a whole lot of clarification here. It says, Ohm's law is a fundamental principle in electronics and electrical engineering that describes the relationship between voltage um, represented as V, current represented as I, and resistance represented as R in an electrical circuit. That law is mathematically expressed as V is equal to I times R. And then here it represents all the, um, it gives representation for all the, um, what V represents, I represents, and R represents. And then states that the formula, uh, the, the formula states that voltage across a conductor is equal to the product of the current flowing through it and its resistance. In simpler terms, it means that the voltage drops across a resistance or resistor is directly proportional to the current passing through it and the resistance it offers to that current. So if you know any two of the, of the values, voltage, current, resistance, uh, or resistance, you can use Ohm's law to calculate the third. It's a fundamental concept, you, concept used in designing and analyzing electrical circuits. 
So yeah, as you as you would imagine, um, it goes a bit more in depth. It tells you why this is a fundamental law. And if you were solving for it, if you're given say voltage and current, then you can you can use the the equation set up um, to solve for resistance. But if you're given resistance and voltage, you can likewise also solve for current. So so far as two components um, of the equation is given, two variables of the equation are given, then you can solve for the third. Now, mind you, say you missed uh, the second one. Let's actually give me a second. So radar can operate at frequencies as high as. <clears throat> so let's take number eight, for instance. So I'm just going to be jumping around. This is more of a demonstration sort of video. So say you got this one wrong, you didn't quite know exactly what radar um, or what frequency uh, radar operates in. Then you can likewise ask ChatGPT and it'll tell you. And you can even ask it to explain further. So why is this, why, why is this the case? Why is this true? And then likewise, <clears throat> it tells you that radar systems typically operate at microwave frequencies, which are in a range of one gigahertz to several tens gigahertz. The options provided are in a megahertz. So with 100 megahertz being equivalent to 100 gigahertz, or I guess with 100,000 megahertz being equivalent to 100 gigahertz, this frequency range is suitable for radar applications because microwaves have shorter wavelengths, allowing for better resolution and accuracy in detecting objects. Additionally, higher frequencies often provide finer details and improved performance in radar systems. <clears throat> so you see how this then goes a bit more in depth. Um, if you're maybe drawing a blank on any of these questions and you don't know why the answer is the answer, I mean, you can ask ChatGPT to explain why. They, that answer is the um, correct answer, right? And this is not only true for the electronics information section. I mean, say for instance that I think the only the only ones that we haven't, I mean, at least ChatGPT. I'm not aware if ChatGPT has come to that uh, cap capability yet. Would be the ones with image. Um, I think that that one ChatGPT has already implemented that ability, but I haven't actually used it myself. So I won't demonstrate that here, but but besides that, I mean, you, any question goes. You can basically, if n nothing, if none of the questions make sense to you, you can definitely look it up. So the sum of measures of the angles of a trapezoid is. So for instance, number twenty-three, we can go back to our best friend ChatGPT here, put it in there, and see exactly why this is the case. So it solves math problems. Um, engineering problems, science problems, I mean, you name it. Even a reading section, it'll do for you um, and tell you why maybe the correct answer is the correct answer. So look, again, we have the sum of the measures of an uh, of the angles of a trapezoid is, and then we get we have four multiple um, choice options here. And then Chad GPT goes along to say the sum of the measures of the angles of a trapezoid is always 360 degrees therefore the correct option is a so let me see what else we could do so that's the math knowledge section um, now let's try what I haven't actually tried is some of the reading sections, but uh, let's try let's try a random reading section. Let's see what we get. So for instance, let's try this one. Um, we go back to ChatGPT. We type it in. Let's see what we get here. So just this is just for instance in case you you know you missed a reading. 
Um, you've missed a question on a reading and didn't quite understand why the, the right answer is the right answer. Again, you can ask ChatGPT to help you out. Um, and even ask it, why is this correct? And get some explanations. And then it tells you exactly why the correct answer is the correct answer because the passage explicitly mentions that mock job interviews help students prepare for real job interviews. It states that participate in the mock interview. So ChatGPT can read and understand the passage and answer the question for you, essentially. So it can help you in a, on the paragraph comprehension section as well. Um, as you would imagine, if it can help you in a paragraph comprehension section as well, I mean, it can definitely help you with the vocabulary section as well, right? So a random vocab question here. Let's see. Compensation most nearly means. And this should be commission, so exactly correct. So again, let's navigate to a different section and see what else we can use ChatGPT to help us out with? Um, this is the, I'm assuming this is mostly the, most likely the arithmetic session. Um, so the arithmetic section, let's pick a random, random problem. So for instance, number eight, let's go back to our, our friend ChatGPT. <clears throat> Type it in, see what we get. And it should be able to solve this pretty easily. ChatGPT running a bit slow this morning. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one using it, so <laughs> they, their service could be clogged at the, at the moment, but it's still trying. Just give it a little bit more patience. It's taking quite a bit. Some, it's taking a bit of time. It doesn't usually take this long, I guess. Yeah, this is definitely taking longer than usual. Um, let's try this again. Okay. <clears throat> so we come back and ChatGPT has already gone through and solved it for us. So saying that the answer option in this case then is, is D. So again, we can try another random problem from the arithmetic section um, to see how ChatGPT performs. Um, let me see which one. Let's pick something like this and see what we get. So this is, like I said, I mean, to, to effectively, to make sure that your studies um, or you're using your time effectively, what you want to do is go through these exams <clears throat> do them by yourself the first time around under the time constraints that's been given. And afterwards, the questions that you missed that you may not necessarily have someone to help you out with if you don't have a, a tutor or if you don't have a friend that you're studying with who may may have gotten that question correct who can explain it to you, um, then you have ChatGPT to ask, right? And ChatGPT should be able to uh, break it down exactly why the correct answer is the correct answer. And you can even ask it, you know, further questions uh, regarding the problem, as to how it was solved, you know, if any steps doesn't make sense, you can ask about that specific steps as to why that step is that step, right? <clears throat> so that's the beauty of having these sort of AI systems at our disposal. Now it, it, it really, really uh, multiplies our productivity, right? <clears throat> Whereas I me, mean, you'd probably be spending way, way back in the day, you'd probably be spending God knows how many hours at the library going through um, math books or going through um, arithmetic books to see if you can find a, an example that is similar to um, the problem that you're solving. Then came the advent of what? Google. And with Google, you can typically search up a problem like that, I mean, in relatively a short, amount, a short time. 
But now with ChatGPT, <clears throat> it's it also it's a better version of Google, right? Um, where you normally have to go through several few links um, to find the maybe the example that suits that's suitable to you. Now ChatGPT just breaks it down and it it extracts it extracts the essential information that you need, so that you don't have to go through the links that you. Um, needed to go through um, with Google. So, I mean, this is just brilliant. And this, I think, would help. Um, it's really, really going to help a lot of students um, pass whatever test that they're studying for. And this is, mind you, this is not only relevant to the ASVAB exam. This is relevant to it, people going to college. So if you're in high school planning on going to college, you'll probably be taking the ACT, SAT. I mean, ChatGPT will be available to you, right? That you can, I mean, ChatGPT is free. So, you'll be able to um, study more effectively and it basically, you know, have your own personal uh, tutor, a brilliant tutor at your disposal. I mean, how, how amazing is that, right? So I wanted to make sure that I really, really go, uh, go through this with you guys to show you the, the sort of tools that you have at your disposal for acing the, the ASVAB or whatever test that you may be studying for. So, if you found this video to be helpful, do make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, comment. Let me know what you think about this tool um, and how you're going to be using it. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Um, later.